Thank you, Kevin and Chairman Terry Earle. Hey, welcome to speech number three today. How that? Um, I'm excited to be here. And, and by that, I mean I'm excited to be here in person today and thrilled to be on the team here at Evergreen Marketing Group. I won't spend much time on my background, partly because many of you know me, but I'm sure you're more interested in my ideas for the future. And I can assure you, I wake up every day with a passion and energy for this industry. I've been in it for 30 years. Wow, wow. And during that time, I've become a big believer in the group distribution model. I've seen its power and effectiveness firsthand. And it's a big reason why becoming a CEO of Evergreen Marketing Group is truly a dream job in this industry. It feels sort of like Steve Young taking over for Joe Montana. Or Brett Favre, maybe, taking over for, uh, oh, Brett Favre. Yes, there's pressure to fill big shoes. But I'm also being handed the reins of a champion, a team that's built to go the distance. Speaking of a leading an NFL team, that reminds me of a great quote by Coach Tony Dungy, who said, great leadership is about making the lives of your team members or coworkers better. And that's exactly what I plan to do here at Evergreen. As I mentioned, I believe in the group distribution model. I also believe that we must continue to innovate and evolve to sustain and advance the industry that's been so good to us for so long and so many generations. And that's why the timeline of this transition is perfect. I truly do. Now, Kevin and the board can take all the credit. I mean, they started this transition process before the vast majority of us even heard the words COVID-19 or coronavirus. And COVID did throw some wrenches into that process, that's for sure. But I believe there's a reason for everything and think it's working really well. So you might not think taking over in the midst or hopefully the latter stages of a pandemic would be a good thing. But if COVID has taught us anything, it's to embrace change. Heck, pivoting might just be our next Olympic sport. So why is embracing change such a good thing? Because historically, people and companies are resistant to change, especially organizations that's been as successful as we have been. But I know everyone in this room has changed the way you do things over the last year. The way you hold meetings, the way you interact with customers and suppliers, how you celebrate birthdays or shop for groceries, travel or stay fit. People today, including our members, suppliers, and all of you that make up the incredible Evergreen team, they don't just accept change, you know it's coming. So I'm not surprised that the members of the board are preparing for change the way they have. And from what I've seen thus far, they're very much embracing it. I would say our customers take it one step further and they're demanding change because their customers are demanding it of them. That's one reason why my approach to leadership is to stay in front of the customers, keep eyes on the street to see what's really happening because we know it's not just behind the desk. I believe in the day-to-day -day engagement with our members and preferred suppliers. I respect data and trends just as much as the next person. But I know there's a difference between understanding what people are doing and staying connected to them. Even COVID has not stopped me from seeing many of you. Heck, it began during the search process last summer. I spoke to a dozen or more preferred suppliers and nearly 40% of our membership. Since September, I traveled and visited as many members and preferred suppliers as I could. Though I believe we have to be diligent with safety protocols, I'm committed to leading at the front lines. Traveling north of the Mason-Dixon line has been a challenge during this COVID situation, but I'm coming to see all of you. Now, when I talk about embracing change, I don't mean to imply that I'm going to reshape the core of what we do. Like I said, Evergreen is positioned to lead and win right now. I believe in the pillars that support key strategic areas rooted in Evergreen's values. Specifically, I see our pillars as training and professional development, led by Wade McCone, member and supplier relations, our marketing and technology, and last but not least, smart growth. I plan to build on these strategic and scalable pillars 
with ambitious goals and objectives that will accomplish our vision. Evergreen leads this industry, and I see us continuing to blaze new trails for others to follow. For example, it's clear that all organizations today must embrace, enhance, and expand their efforts in diversity and inclusion, as well as technology. Those things aren't going away. They continue to evolve, and they will shape our industry. Who here has seen the great commencement speech by Admiral William McRaven? where he begins by saying, if you want to change the world, start off by making your bed. <laughs> Fantastic. He goes on to explain that starting the day with one small accomplishment will give you a good feeling and inspire you to complete another task and another and another. He also knows about, about how it teaches you the value of little things. If you don't get the little things right, you never accomplish the big things. Kevin has proven over the years the importance of the little things that became big things and ultimately big wins for Evergreen. So I will be continuing to focus on those little things with new initiatives. In the past six months, we've launched new initiatives to build on our pillars. Ex executing on these will definitely make a difference in Evergreen's world. Let's start with training and professional development. Evergreen is already best in class in this area. I want us to redefine that class together. To do that, we've introduced new programs, such as Accelerate 360, a digital learning and remote selling platform addition to Evergreen University. We are also in initial stages of developing a train the trainer certification program within Evergreen University to add another layer of structure and protocol to the training professionals. In addition, an enhanced professional development curriculum for our members is focused on the next generation of leadership and covers strategic planning, business development, financial planning, and sustainability. These steps will help us add tremendous value to our members and our customers to ensure that we remain an indispensable partner rather than just another vendor. As entrepreneur turned billionaire Sarah Blakely put it, the goal is to be valuable. Because once you're valuable, success attracts itself to you. Next is the diversity and inclusion program that will make us a more rounded and powerful company. We're dealing with a new generation now. Our suppliers, members, customers, and potential employees all have different values than they did when most of us started in this industry. D&I can no longer be thought of as a trend. It is foundational to our successful structure moving forward. And as Amanda Gorman said in her now famous poem, The Hill We Climb, and I paraphrase, we are striving to forge our union with purpose. We close the divide because we know to put our future first, we must put differences aside. In practical and concrete terms, putting our future first means attracting, recruiting, and retaining the next generation of group leaders for this great business. Diversity and inclusion is a 360 degree encompassing tool that will make a difference in all of your organizations. And for that reason, the 2021 ESAC primary initiative will be diversity and inclusion. I want to challenge all of our members and preferred suppliers to attend our next partnership conference or your next industry event with diversity and inclusion in mind. Technology is another area that is vital to this new generation as virtual has become an integrated part of all of our businesses. It's crucial for us to excel there as well. Steve Jobs knew a little bit about that, right? When he put it best by saying innovation distinguishes between a leader and a follower. And that's why we formed the Evergreen Marketing Group Technology Steering Committee, made up of four of our top members and four great preferred suppliers. Our objective is to upgrade, upgrade our website and its capabilities, evolve the look and feel of our brand, and ultimately in integrate a mobile app with key push notification capability. Once again, we will be setting the pace for the entire industry. 
And that's a big reason why I'm so excited to be part of the leadership team here at Evergreen. We're setting the pace and raising the bar for an amazing industry. We won't wait on scrappy upstarts to introduce new ideas for our industry. Innovation and forward thinking are not just for the little guys. We will maintain our role as established leaders by playing the role of disruptor. We couldn't do that without an amazing group of people. When this transition process began, then Keith, then Chairman, excuse me, Keith Turtenwald of Lincoln, he told me, he said, Bill, he said, the role of the CEO is to listen, provide direction, and most importantly, provide clarity to our board of directors, members, and supplier partners. Your voice will guide our mission. I've listened to our members and suppliers, and I'm gonna to continue to listen to you. I have a clear vision for how Evergreen can continue to grow, thrive, and be best in class in multiple areas. We're taking decisive action to make that vision a reality. And together, we will continue to differentiate Evergreen Marketing Group from everyone else in this industry. I look forward to spending some time with all of you this week. Thank you again. Let's have a great conference and lunch is served.